royal guards who stand at, at attention and they won't move a muscle. You guys know the ones that I'm talking about? They have those big furry hats. Call them like the beef eaters, I guess, right? Do you know what? At Buckingham Palace, they are, those guys are called the cold stream guards. And it is their, it's their job to guard the royal palace. Those guys, those guys go through, believe it or not, 30 weeks of training. 30 weeks of training before they are assigned their post at Buckingham Palace. And by the time they get done with their training, they are absolutely expected to be focused and unflappable. You know, that's why they stand so still, stand so steady. Of course, one of the most popular touristy things to do is to try to make them laugh, right? Try to get them to move. So people will make faces in front of them or they'll sing to them or they'll pose with them. But it doesn't work, does it? It doesn't work. Unless you touch them, then it works. But not in your favor. Those guys, those guys are trained to be focused, to be vigilant, you know? These guys, these guys have to see and hear and sense and feel any possible danger that's going on, even if people are right in front of them making faces. You know, no matter what's going on around these guys, they've got to be able to tune out all of the distractions and the silliness. They've got to be able to look through that to see the important stuff that's going on around them. Isn't that cool to be able to have that kind of focus? Isn't that cool? I, I, I have a feeling that with the amount of, of, of coffee that I drink, I would be disqualified from that. I, I, just, I don't think I'd be able to stand that still, you know, for that amount of time. But I think it's really cool that, that those guys can do that. You, you and I, we um, thankfully do not have people like making faces right in front of us to try to distract us. Um, well, maybe you guys do, but I don't. But life itself just does that. You know, life itself just distracts me and, and tries to get me off, off of focus. You know, we know, you and I know, that, that time goes by at the same rate every minute, every hour, every day, every week, every month, every year, right? That time goes by at the same rate. But we're, we're all probably aware of the, the feeling of time slipping away or time flying. Have you, do you know what I'm talking about when we hear that time flies or time slips away? You guys know what I'm talking about? Sometimes you hear people say that the older you get, the faster time goes. You heard that? Okay, yeah, you've heard that before. All right. Now, now, we know that that's not literally true. It doesn't actually go by faster, but there's something about the way our schedules are structured that makes it feel like time is going by faster. You know what I mean? I think, it, it, I think that it has to do with the fact that as we get older, our schedules get fuller and fuller. You know, And so it's not that time is actually going by faster or that we have less time than we used to. It's just that we have less free time than we used to have, less open time, less quiet time than we used to have. And, and do you know what happens when we have less free time and less quiet time? You know what happens? We get caught up in all the stuff that's going on around us. We get wrapped up in that. You know, and sometimes we, we miss the important things that we're supposed to be able to see. You know, we still get so caught up in this stuff that, that the things that we're supposed to be able to see and hear and sense and feel just kind of whiz right by us. You know, time isn't actually going faster, but it feels like it is because we're getting bombarded with all kinds of stuff. Those cold stream guards, they go through all this intense training to tune out the distractions, right, and stay focused. They go through all that training. Have you guys ever gone through 30 weeks of training to tune out the distractions? I, I haven't. I haven't. Which means that all the noise and the chaos and all the busyness, we just have to, like, deal with it. We have to figure out how to deal with it. And, and do you want to know how most people deal with the stress and the chaos and the busyness? Do you know how most people deal with it? You know? They get lost in it. They just go with it. They do. You know, if we're being honest, my guess would be that most of us would probably say that our lives feel like this fast-flowing river, you know, that's just coursing along, and we feel like a twig in it. 
and we're just zooming right along with the river, right? And the days fly by, and the weeks fly by, and the months fly by, and the years even sometimes fly by. And we hope, we hope, 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 hope that if there's something important that we are supposed to get, some, some, some lesson that will help us in this journey through life, we hope that it happens to appear right in front of us. Because if it doesn't appear right in front of us, then we are very likely going to zoom right by it. And in the blink of an eye, that moment is gone. Now tell me, am I the only one that feels this way? Do, do others feel like this sometimes, that we're just zipping along and we may be missing some of the things that we should be, we should be getting? You know, what I really wish is that I could be like one of those cold stream guards. And I, I, I wish I had the ability to just focus and tune out like the distractions and the dumb stuff and to be able to pick up on the things that I'm supposed to get. I wish that I had like a, like a, a, a refuge, a safe place, you know, where I, can, where I can focus on this. That's what I really need, is something that I can cling to in, in, in the river of my life that just flows on at this crazy pace. I just need to be able to find a refuge, you know, something that I can hold on to. Do you want to see something cool? Turn, turn if you have a Bible with, me, with you, turn with me to uh, Psalm 46. Psalm 46, if, or you could use your phone or a tablet or whatever. If you want to use the Bibles, there's Bibles in front of you. Grab one of those. In the blue Bible, if you have a blue Bible in front of you, it's on page 473. And on the maroon large print, it's 882. But it's right, it's about in the center, about in the center of your Bible, Psalm 46. Um, these, these Psalms, I love the Psalms. The Psalms are, are, these, are these poems or songs, you know, that, that reflect people's, relationship with God and their struggles with their, with their spiritual journey. And there's, there's so many different emotions expressed. Really valuable to read these. Psalm 46 um, has, has special meaning, I think, when, as we as we're, feel like we're just shooting through life, you know? And, um, and life is just carrying us along like this twig in this raging river. Um, and for, Psalm 46, again, 473 or 882, and this is, this is what it says, Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. So we will not fear when earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea. Let the oceans roar and foam. Let the mountains tremble as the waters surge. A river brings joy to the city of our God, the sacred home of the Most High. God dwells in that city. It cannot be destroyed. From the very break of day, God will protect it. The nations are in chaos and their kingdoms crumble. God's voice thunders and the earth melts. The Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. Come see the glorious works of the Lord. See how he brings destruction upon the world. He causes wars to end throughout the earth. He breaks the bow and snaps the spear, burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. The Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. Isn't that cool? I love this. I love this. Because, you know, as it feels like, like life is just shooting along, is flying along, God says that he is my refuge and my strength that he is my fortress, that he is my safe place, that he is the one who protects me. I love this psalm. Isn't this cool, though? The whole thing is about God's power providing a shelter for his people in the midst of the chaos of life. That's what this whole psalm is about. God has sheltered his people providing that sense of presence. Look at that first verse, and I love the first verse. God is our refuge and strength, always.
that he is a rock in the midst of that river. And, and if I choose to, I can go shoot down a mine. And sometimes people do that. Sometimes people choose to do that, right? But in the midst of that river is a great rock of my God. And if I choose to, I can cling to him. And when I do that, he will provide me with stability and with refuge and with shelter. And if I cling to him, the water cannot, cannot carry me along because I'm holding on to my refuge. I do that, I can start to think like this cold stream does. Because the water's not carrying me along. I've got time to focus and pay attention to these other things. And this doesn't, this doesn't make sense, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Because if my life is shooting along at 100 miles an hour, or if my schedule is as full as I sometimes allow it to become, then I don't have the time and I don't have the energy to focus on the important things. At that pace, the pace that we often live our lives, Life is all about the distractions. It is. Life is a blur, you know? And our schedule just becomes so full that we don't have room for anything else. So do you want to know what the answer to this is? You know what it is? Slow down. Slow down. Seems really simple, doesn't it? But look again. Look at verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. Isn't that a great invitation? Be when, when Job, Job is right before the psalm, when Job in the Bible is trying to figure out the chaos that his life has become, one of his friends comes up to him and says this, says, Hear this, O Job. Stop and consider the wondrous works of God. Stop and, and consider what God has done. Stop. And look. You get that? Stop. I mean, interestingly, the cold stream guards have it right. Stop. Be still. Observe. Don't get lost in the chaos and the busyness and, and all the silliness around you. But stop and look and listen to what God is doing and what he's saying. And this, th this does make sense, right, doesn't it? Because if we're always moving forward, always trying to, to, to move faster and faster and always filling up our schedules, if we're doing that, we just don't have time to listen to what God is doing. And this is especially true if God is trying to get us to understand that our lives may be shooting along at 100 miles an hour, but God, in fact, is not. God is here in this present moment, in this moment, ready to help in times of trouble. That's what it says, right? Ready to help in times of trouble. Ready to speak in times of confusion. Ready to bless in times of pain. We can let the river just shoot us right along, or we can cling to our rock, find refuge in the presence of our Creator. It's our choice. It's our choice. I guess my question is, I guess my question is, do we even know how to slow down? Right? I mean, do we know how to stop and observe the wondrous works of God? Do we know how to do that? I mean, the answer maybe is no. Maybe we don't know how, right? Because we're not trained to do that in this world. We're not trained to do that. We are taught to go faster and faster. And we are taught to do more and more, to get more stuff done. Isn't that what our world tells us to do? Keep going, go faster, get back up and keep moving. That's what our world tells us to do. But what our culture and our world tells us to do isn't always right, is it? It's not always right. You know what God says? My ways are not your ways. That's what God says. My ways are not your ways. God is well aware that you and I are being taught that the purpose of life is achievement it's getting things done. It's fulfilling some deadline and some, some purpose that we have that other people are giving to us. That, that the more we get done, the better we are. Accomplishments is what we are told, right? That's what we told the point is accomplishing things. And so it makes sense, I guess, that if accomplishment is what we're aiming for, that the faster we go and the more we get done, the better, right? Doesn't that make sense then? If accomplishment is the purpose. What if the real goal is not accomplishment. But what if it's development? 
What if God is speaking to me and he's trying to get me to become a certain kind of person as opposed to getting a certain amount of stuff done? Because if that's true, and I think it may be, then my number one goal is to stop and to listen and to get in tune with what God is saying to me, right? Isn't that true? And you know what? If I want to stop and I want to get in tune with the Spirit of God, if I want to do that, the answer to that is right in the psalm. Be still. Be still. Listen, if there is no stillness in your schedule, if you look at your schedule and there's no stillness in your schedule, it is highly unlikely that you will be able to hear what God is saying to you. True? Isn't that true? I mean, imagine, imagine that you and I are just shooting down the river of life. We're just shooting down, and God is that rock in the middle of the river, and he's speaking to us words of encouragement and hope and love and purpose. He's speaking those words. How are we going to hear those words if we are just hurtling right along? How are we going to hear it? So here's what I want to do. Over the next few weeks, I want to talk about ways that we, can, that we can slow down so that we can sense the presence of God near us. Next week, I want to talk about finding God in quiet prayer. And I want to talk about the Sabbath, you know, what it means to rest. That's next week, okay? The week after that, I wanna, I wanna see if maybe we can back up a little bit, back our lives up, so that we can see where God is creating action in our lives and then moving in that direction. And then after that, what I, I want us to think about ways that we, can, that we can maybe get outside of our own perspective to sense how God is working through the other people in our lives, all right? But all of this, all of this is about being intentional, about being still about slowing down so that we can sense what God is doing. Again, we can let that river just shoot us along. But if we want to slow down, we can tune out the distractions and we can see what God is doing. In a little bit here, um, you and I are going to have an opportunity to celebrate the Lord's Supper, you know, communion, which is a powerful reminder of, of, of our forgiveness our purpose, our relationship with God and with one another. And as we get ready to have communion together today, we're going to sing a song uh, called Softly and Tenderly. Softly and Tenderly. And if you've never heard the song or sung the song, pay attention to the words because it has this beautiful reminder that Jesus does not shout at us to get our attention. But he speaks to us softly and tenderly. Almost, almost in a whisper. Hoping that we will slow down enough to listen. So as you take communion today, either you take it in your seats or forward, come forward, I'll explain that in a little bit. But as you do that, I want you to use that opportunity to quiet your spirit, to tune out the distractions and listen, listen to the still small voice of God that is speaking to you. God is our refuge and our strength, always ready to help, always ready to speak, always ready to bless, just Listen, I'm going to invite you to pray with me this morning.